Hey everybody, welcome to our weekly ecosystem office hours calls. I am your host Jinx and we are joined as always by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. Uh, I know that schedules are tight for some folks today, so I'm going to uh, kind of reverse the order a little bit on how we do updates. Uh, Gabby, uh, y'all got any Grove side updates? Uh, no major updates this week. I'm hoping to have some for you next week. Excellent. Uh, I don't see Blade, so we'll keep an eye on him uh, uh, if they come through. <laughs> So let's go to Zach for community updates. Hello, hello. Um, let's see. Well, uh, we had a lot of discussion around CRUD last week. That proposal failed. Um, we decided to try to postpone it for more times, as many of you know. Um, and so Jack has worked through an updated proposal, just kind of finalizing that before it goes back to the forum. Um, so expect that in the next couple of days. We, I'm trying to think what else. I, I ha got COVID over the weekend, so my brain's a little foggy here. Um, ads has a 9 a.m. Thursday Twitter space that she's been hosting and continues to host. It's 9 a.m. Uh, BST, I believe, which is uh, like Europe timing. So if anybody's around for that and interested in tuning in, we'd love the extra attendance. I think this is the second week doing it, so that's really exciting. Um, tomorrow, we also have our builders call where we will be getting updates from all of our gateways. Um, the foundation is going to polish that up and put those out on YouTube. So you feel free to uh, join us in person, but we're also going to make sure that we get some video content so everybody can um, everybody can enjoy it. And, and the whole point here is we want to start building a content library. So as more people come in, want to build a gateway, want to be a node runner, whatever it is, they have an understanding of what's going on in the system and kind of what open source tools are available for them to use. Um, Cause we have so many gateways now building such so many cool pieces that we want to make sure that they get the, you know, the spotlight that they deserve. Um, what else? Uh, if anybody has a quick grant here, uh, your quick grants are due this week for an update. So please use Karma Gap as usual. Um, because of my COVID, I'm not going to be reviewing them until Monday. So you have a little extra time this week. Uh, if you do need to, to get your updates in, and you can feel free to DM me if you have any questions about it. Um, Themes wrote up a little proposal, and there's a note in the Quick Grants uh, Discord channel with some instructions on that. Uh, I think that's the majority of the updates right now. Thanks, Jinx. Yeah, I, I remember seeing that there was a uh, a call Thursday at 9 a.m. around Retro PGF. Is that the Twitter space? I don't see it in any events. Yeah, I think that's the Twitter space, uh, the 9 a.m. So I think that's what ads is doing uh, today. But don't quote me on this again. I'm just tuning in this morning. I can um, jump in. That's uh, that's tomorrow. That is uh, that is a Twitter space um, with some of the partners as well. So right, anyone sorry, tomorrow's interested Thursday. in retro PGF uh, funding should join the Twitter space tomorrow at 9 a.m.? Yeah, it's kind of, um, it's a broader kind of, Call, I guess, to discuss. And yeah, that, I think that would be great. Um, it's to discuss, I guess, the reasons for Pocket doing it, how and why it's different to Optimism's round. Um, so it should, should be a good discussion around the purpose of these rounds, how they can be helpful, how Pocket's doing it differently, what we're hoping to achieve. So yeah, we're looking to get in, I guess, a broader audience as well, but uh, we'd love, uh, obviously, as many of the Pocket community to come and ask questions and provide support and all that kind of good stuff. Beautiful. I will uh, endeavor to be there, but 9 a.m., I'm glad it's a Twitter space where I can just be off mic because I will not be about that life. Well, Jinx, it's actually 9 a.m. BST, I think. Let me grab the actual link for you. Um, so that's, that's what, like 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. your time? Just a heads up. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I expected. Let me okay, get that, so that link for you. Fuck the United States is, is the message that I'm getting here. Yes. Well, no, 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 no. It's more of like include Europe and that time zone. You know, it's it's um it's not exclusive. It's inclusive of a different time zone. Yeah, nine a.m. European time. But yeah, I mean, you know, one p.m. European time would still be in that range and actually be in a time when EST is awake. Yeah, well, I, 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 I will... can jump in. It, it, it's it's at nine a.m. Eastern. Right? It's two p.m. <laughs> European. We're back to winning. You uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and more context, actually, I think Ad's got some interesting 
data i forget where it's from i think it's like it's some open source thing that shows um number of impressions or kind of i guess number of active i think maybe followers of pocket um i think it's based on our twitter handle um who are active at certain times i think it's something similar for discord and it kind of like shows a heat map across the week um and it, i think that window around 9 or 10 a.m eastern is our most active time period for our community i'm guessing because that crosses over with Probably you're getting some of the Asian audience, you're getting all of Europe, middle of their day, and you're getting, you know, a decent amount of the of the East Coast as well. So kind of that may be the reason. We're all speculating on that. We don't actually have the, the breakdown of the data per region. But um yeah, I think that's one of the reasons ads is playing around with these kind of time zones because it's when our community seems to be at its most active. Yeah, I can definitely drag my ass onto a call that I don't have to talk at at nine AM. So I'll sip my coffee and listen. Pocket News, do you have the link to that? I'm, I'm going through our Twitter and I don't, I can't find it like easily available. Just to the Twitter space specifically. If you can drop it in chat, that would be great. Oh yeah, I think I can schedule a reshare too, so I can probably kick that off from my account around 8.30 or so. Okay, work. Uh, Shane, any tech updates you want to bring us from the protocol perspective? Yeah, really just uh, things are progressing on the uh, main or the uh, testnet uh, testing. So uh, they re uh, they, they did a regenesis of testnet to uh, start trying out some new things to prepare for public testnet, which we're still expecting uh, basically late have it ready, you know, late next week and then uh, uh, you know, early next or late this week, early next week. So kind of in that time frame uh, is when we're wanting to launch the public test. At least that's the plan. Uh, and so basically just currently a lot of tests are just underway. Um, a lot of stress tests uh, specifically so that we can kind of see how, how things will operate once folks really start uh, hammering it with, uh, uh, you know, test calls and things of that nature. So a lot of those kind of things are, are happening in the background right now. Um, and so really just progress is uh, being made, uh, been finding you know some issues under load, which is great because that means we have things to patch and we're getting more hard data on how much uh, you know each client can basically take. And so, yeah, really, uh, just a lot of positive testing. This is also kind of the time where everything is really kind of coming together. Uh, and we're doing tests that go from, you know, start all the way to finish, uh, you know, in this latest iteration of, uh, uh, of Shannon. So anyways, a lot of cool things happening, but basically still planning for late uh, this week, early next week for really the like official launch of public test net. Um, at least that's the, uh, that's the going right now, and at least with what the uh, testing has been showing, it seems like yeah, we'll have uh, we'll, we'll have something to launch. Beautiful. That's that is super great to hear. I know that we are all uh, very excited to uh, see that come together. I want to start uh, playing around with uh, uh, public testnet nodes as soon as possible. So yeah, and also the team is. Uh, uh, kind of putting together a lot of documentation, uh, including like little videos uh, that will be uh, allow people to kind of get a grid for different things within Shannon. Um, so different developers that are kind of owning certain areas uh, inside of, um, uh, you know, inside the Shannon protocol is going to make like just like little walkthroughs or something about either how something works or, or how it's structured or something just so people have ample materials to just figure out things and kind of learn how things are, are kind of working. Uh, these aren't like, you know, like marketing videos or anything. They're just informational videos that people will be able to, that really want to understand how certain things are operating or how uh, to run certain things. We'll just be able to watch to, to get a general idea of. Um, but anyways, I think that's pretty cool that the protocol team is, uh, yeah, going, going that approach as well to getting good materials out there for folks. Beautiful. We much appreciate it. Uh, Dermot, if I can call on you for a second, I think the most common question we saw in the last seven days in uh, our TG chats was uh, when liquidity. So can you talk a little bit about the deployment there?
Wait, did we lose Dermot? I can't hear him. He looks unmuted. We're not getting any input, Dermot. Hey, can everyone hear me? Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Sorry. Um, headphones switching between my uh, phone and uh, laptop. Um, yeah, so sorry. I, I did post this as a response in Telegram, but I haven't actually posted anything official. So the yeah, our market maker has been live since I think probably early morning um, Eastern on Tuesday. Um, so they started to we transferred over the the pocket last week, um, and then they moved it to exchanges. I guess Monday night, and yeah, got live on by bit. I think Gate initially, um, and KuCoin is the other the supported exchange that um, they're kind of they're now starting to quote for as well. So yeah, that, that's um, that's the major update. I guess maybe you, Jenks, or if anyone else has any specific questions, yeah, please let us know. Yeah, I mean, it's, I don't have any specific questions. We're looking forward to seeing it. Um, I think most people were just kind of looking for a general update because the rollout was fairly slow, um, which, of course, you know, sourcing vendors, that's to be expected. Yeah, no, for sure. I think, um, yeah, I think contracts, the onboarding, pockets, non-EVM took a bit more time as well. Um, all of this just ended up taking a bit more time than we'd like. Um, we did get a great deal through the process and the auction process, which is great. Um, we're going to have more data from from CoinWatch, so I'm actually happy to kind of yeah share more kind of may- maybe monthly updates from how things are going. Um, yeah, I guess what what things look like already. You can see um, on some of the key exchanges, it's it's a hell of a lot better, um, and that will continue to improve over the over the coming weeks as. Um, and, and and I guess yeah, it's more for more clarity how the deal works. It's it's usually a function of trading volume. So as trading volume increases, so they won't be using all the loan initially. As trading volume increases, they add more um, liquidity to the books. Uh, so that's what's what I deeper and deeper trading volume across all the different depths, and that's up to two percent, but actually right down to um, I think it's it's a point five percent. So it's kind of like much tighter spreads, um, and we'll be monitoring. This and holding the the market makers accountable to this, and if they're not doing their job, essentially we'll we'll fire them, replace them with someone else. So um, yeah, that that's how it's going to be working, and we're kind of going to get constant feedback, and ultimately giving them direction on as new exchanges come on on come on board in terms of our expectations, and also kind of the feedback on their performance. Um, and they're getting daily feedback from from CoinWatch, who's helping us manage these relationships, and they're an expert in this. So yeah, it's um, been a long time coming. Um, I don't think there's going to be any overnight change. I think the big thing for this, it's one of those kind of um, hygiene factors. So it just helps things for the future. So as, you know, hopefully more demand comes in, um, they can actually now get, they can buy more with a hell of a lot less leverage. So that should really help pocket as uh, in, in, in those kind of moments. And actually as people do sell, I mean, there's a lot of node runners out there. There's a lot of people who need to take um, profit. Um, they're going to cause less slippage um, and kind of less volatility in the market. So it's it's going to be helpful in both respects. Um, and as I kind of said before, this it, this alone isn't a panacea for price. I think that just needs to be more buyers than sellers ultimately. But it's definitely an important, um, I guess, unblocker and kind of hygiene factor for pocket on the road to becoming tier one. And as we discussed before, for getting listings on those those bigger exchanges too. Beautiful. I'm excited about that as well. Uh, is there any, uh, and I, I saw this is driven by a lot of conversations we were seeing around Twitter, um, any updates uh, uh, or additional information that can be uh, disseminated around um, some of the new gateways coming on board and, and when we can expect to see greater amounts of relay uh, volume driven by them? Yeah, for sure. Um, that's a great question. So Liquify is live, which is awesome. Um, they're obviously only starting to send small sums of traffic now. I, I think Chainstack should actually be onboarded in the next couple of weeks. Um, and Raid Guilds and Developer DAO are both pushing for before the end of the month. Um, one of them may actually come come on board in the actually much sooner, not in the next couple of weeks. So I guess in terms of timings, we should start to see a noticeable improvement by the end of the month and i'm i'm thinking that basically in the course of mid-june onwards we should start to see relay start to ramp up as bd efforts and continue to improve and we have six active gateways all selling access to pocket um each with their own 
you know unique network and uh brand they can tap into so i think that's kind of the period um but yeah six out of six active gateways which is a, obviously a massive setup from the the two that we've had and additionally there are actually and this is going to be something we're monitoring um there was what we were working off with that we could probably had a cap at six gateways pre shannon Depending on um, how these new gateway launches go, there actually may be space for even another one to three gateways. So there actually are, um, there are actually another four gateways that we're speaking to. They may actually end up, some of them may end up falling into Shannon and there, and there are others actually have already expressed interest, but we kind of explicitly said, hey, maybe post Shannon is best for this given the capacity constraints. So um, I guess the point there is there could actually be maybe a few more that come on push on and um, again, and that could bring an interesting diversification of relay growth to the network as well, um, particularly in terms of some of the data sources and customers that these gateways are targeting. So yeah, things are, things are actually looking really good. It feels um, like now is the time when we've actually done a lot of the hard work. Um, we're really starting to kind of clear a lot of the headwinds. Um, I know people are a bit, um, down because of the price and i think i guess for me i think price is a lagging metric um i think we're doing a hell of a lot of cool shit as a community and i think hopefully the world will start to recognize that soon and soon and i think particularly in terms of relay growth will be a great testament to actually that the strategy is working um and that pocket has a kind of a healthy a really healthy kind of demand-based future going forward as well Absolutely. I mean, for me, that that's one of the things that that we haven't seen in a while that I think uh, will really start to uh, cement the usefulness of the protocol is seeing paid relays grow to you know some of the levels that we've reached previously with public endpoint relays. So, very much looking forward to that. Okay. Well, I think I oh no, Blade did show up. Uh, Blade, any uh, updates from the uh, Nodes Gateway perspective? Yeah, sure. I could give out some quick updates. Um, we're currently working on a feature to route to pocket, which then allow people to um, route their endpoints directly to pocket within our UI as a registered user. Uh, we're doing this before monetization, so that way we could get users go ahead to be able to switch their endpoints over to pocket. And then as well as part of this feature, this actually unlocks us to be able to offer more chains that uh, we don't even have within our centralized services, uh, like for example, uh, Solana. <clears throat> That's one update. And that update is uh, tomorrow I'm going to be doing a deeper dive on the gateway server. Uh, if you're not familiar with what the gateway server is, basically this, right, I like to describe it as a, a very cool SDK or like advanced SDK um, that all the other gateway operators are using. We go we will go into a deeper dive of how it works, kind of like the history behind it, and as well, you know, potentially even encourage more contributors to that repository. And that'll be tomorrow on the gateway call. There's a lot of exciting updates tomorrow for that as well. So highly encourage everyone to attend that one too. Nice. That's about it for my end. Smart. Well, in that case, we have reached the end of uh, our traditional or our standard round of updates, and I'll open the floor to anything and everything y'all like. Who's got questions about what? while people are figuring that out. Um, does anybody from Foundation want to comment on the uh, proof of concept on Solana that was pushed out by Voitech uh, yesterday? I can quickly jump in. I'm actually not too sure if uh, Voitech is here or not. Um, yeah, Voitech's great. I mean, obviously super talented and cool to push ahead. Um, one of the things that we were excited about having Rat Pocket is that it's a, it's a primitive that can be used by anyone. Um, and so Voitech's actually now speaking to Raid Guild because Raid Guild are also working on the Rat Pocket migration. And again, this is ultimately above my technical pay grade. Um, but yeah, he's trying to figure out, um, is there a way that we can um, yeah, launch on Solana, 
pre Shannon, that doesn't cause a whole bunch of painful tidy up uh, work later on. Um, it looks like there is there's potentially a, a pretty strong path. So yeah, it's it's cool that we're technically on Solana. I think the the blocker is to um, get all the metadata and to kind of have it looking like a real legit, you know, tier one token. There's a few other additional steps you need to go through. So um, we're just trying to make sure um, if to do those extra steps, we do it in the right way, basically. So um, yeah, Voitech speaking to the regular team. They're keen to chat to him and seeing how they can tailor designs or just let him kind of do his thing and just uh, work around it. So um, yeah, the right people are speaking and fingers crossed we can we can get to a good solution. Um, yeah, I guess f- fast forwarding to post Shannon anyway, we're going to be in a much more modular future where we can leverage IVC, we can use the messaging, all of the key messaging protocols that are out there to make wrap pocket fully multi-chain. So we're planning to use Hyperlane, but we can also tap into the others like Axelar and Wormhole. So um, it's just kind of dealing with this interim period, I guess, before we we have that kind of world-class tech that Shannon will bring. I have to say that I, I'm really enjoying being the uh, Solana W pocket whale that I am right now with my <laughs> 100% of total volume. That's nice. Are you trading with yourself as well? We need to get you an NFT for this. <laughs> yeah, I need some. Uh, I need some fractional W pocket because uh, I can only move the <laughs> one W pocket around so many times. <laughs> Um, Dan Rodman asks, any updates or new insights around the AI narrative? Um, good question there. I think we've had a lot of healthy discussions on that. Do we have anybody from the working group here? Um, I don't see Ramiro, surprisingly. Or Olshansky. Oh, yep, yeah, there you are. Uh, any updates uh, that y'all want to share from the, the AI working group? Yo, uh, no updates yet, but we're making, we've made a ton of progress on the light paper. So within the next uh, one to two weeks, uh, we'll aim to uh, get a review on the draft from a few individuals. And the release is currently targeted for the end of the month. So that's the update there. Beautiful. And I do want to uh, remind everyone that uh, uh, Grove has a repo up for uh, open AI or open uh, API specs for uh, for use with uh, the AI working group. Um, so if you have a little time and uh, feel up to contributing some grunt work uh, just from the perspective of uh, constructing those formats and, and loading them to the repo, that would be a useful thing that just about anybody with a decent understanding of how to use a text editor can do. Also going to throw out a call to action that if you're part of any other communities or ecosystems uh, where AI is somehow part of the stack, so for example, uh, projects like Akash have you know, uh, an ability to lease GPUs. Uh, there's some other projects um, that are all about incentivizing data for training or incentivizing um, some other part of inference that is complementary to what Pocket can do. Just kind of keep that in mind and uh, share it either uh, on Discord or with myself or with the Grove Working Pilot because when when we launch the light paper and once we actually get traffic flowing integrations with other projects is how we're really going to make this uh, powerful beautiful beautiful uh, i assume that when the white paper comes out there will also be a call for uh, um, various contributor types rag services that sort of thing 100 percent that is one of the sections. Excellent. We'll keep an eye out for that. All right. Well, back to open floor. Anybody else got anything you want to bring up?
it's y'all's hour, so feel free to jump off uh, mute and just dive in, or, you know, we can all play video games or something. <laughs> I remember somebody asked me one time, like, how do you deal with the quiet parts during the call? I don't know, sip coffee, bit my vape. If nobody has anything else to chew on, I'm happy to let y'all go uh, early and uh, give you 30 minutes of your life back. I'll leave the floor open for another minute or so to see if a topic pops up. It's it's funny, Blade. I swear to God, there's always like it's almost inevitably right when we're about to end, somebody will be like, "Oh well, I guess I'll." Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. at any point in time. If you're new on this call, we don't stand on formalities. Feel free to just jump in as needed. Well, just wanted to you know mention one more time the uh, uh, community call tomorrow uh, about uh, gateway tech specifically. Um, I mean, really, our, our idea is to, because it's a builder's call, to highlight the tech itself that's that's being built, um, really to give more folks in the ecosystem insight on how they, uh, you know, how they could start leveraging some of this tech, how they could uh, potentially build upon it, um, uh, collaborate with it, uh, and ultimately, gateways are about building businesses. So. Um, anyone that's able to take this tech and build businesses, that's the ultimate dream for uh, the kind of the gateway layer within Pocket and will really be unlocked with Shannon. So um, last week we went through specifically like what gateways are, why is kind of this gateway layer important. And then uh, uh, this week we wanted to then start filling off some of the tech, start introducing folks to uh, things they could potentially start utilizing to build within that uh, uh, within the gateway ecosystem. So, anyways, just wanted to put a put a blurb on uh, exactly what will be touched on and and uh, who it might uh, who it might interest. So, definitely feel free to jump in uh, to the call. I believe it's tomorrow. Uh, sorry, if I uh, office hour or uh, sorry tomorrow 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. So translate that into whatever time zone you're in, but 2 p.m. Eastern time. Yeah, I also want to shout out to the uh, the open uh, pocket office hours that run uh, on Wednesdays uh, from 4 to 6 p.m. EST. Um, that is really a traditional uh, office hours type environment. It's two hours. There is no agenda. It is purely just casual chat. If you've got some idea or some question or you want to explore some topic and, and you don't want to do it in front of the entire community, uh, um, so to speak, um, that is an unrecorded informal call with, with plenty of space for anyone to just jump in whenever you like. So uh, I would encourage you to, to take that kind of stuff there. Um, John asks, do I understand correctly that native pocket can be bridged to Saul after Shannon? Uh, I have a lot of questions about the Shannon era token, and maybe that's maybe that's uh, something that we could open up a, a further conversation on if anybody can speak authoritatively to it today, or maybe that's something that we can schedule a big call around. Uh, what is the status of the pocket native token in a Shannon world? Uh, is that an ERC token? Is that 
you know, is is it like can someone answer that definitively? So I can answer that yeah, the pocket token itself will be will will be a you know a cosmos based um token using their kind of the cosmos sdk's token standard however um we are looking to yeah leverage hyperlane and potentially other messaging protocols to make it as seamless as possible for yeah uh, pocket itself to be to be bridged and transferred everywhere there are a couple of different design considerations that we build team are thinking about so it may be that it goes to Ethereum for first as the core bridge because that is the most secure route, and from Ethereum you can go anywhere. So um, that has been worked out. But yeah, as soon as I have more information on that, I, I definitely will share because I think everyone's excited to see a yeah, ultimately seeing Pocket everywhere, um, and that is what we're trying to achieve. Um, Post Shannon, all, all, all the caveat to that is having Pocket everywhere isn't actually exactly what you want because obviously that's meant to liquidity. Really, we want it where it's going to be the most impactful. And that's going to be where there are communities that care and want to use Pocket, um, receive it as contributors and so on and so forth, where we can use it for governance. So it'll be a combination of where the users are, where we think the liquidity will have the highest ROI on, and where any additional kind of, um, I guess, DAO and contributor infrastructure is based. So it's clearly some of that is now moving towards Arbitrum and base. So in terms of EVM, that may be our kind of core home. Um, but clearly Solana is a burgeoning ecosystem and it's there's a very strong case for Pocket to be there too. So and I, and of course we can leverage the Cosmos ecosystem as well. Um, whether that using Osmosis and so on. So yeah, there's a lot of cool options post Shannon about what we can do. And the main thing being because we're building on the Cosmos SDK, it's just so much easier. Um, there's so many modules we can tap into off the bat and everything doesn't have to be custom anymore. Yeah, I would hope that IBC would be a, a far sight easier to implement um, in in a, a post Shannon world. Uh, obviously we don't want pocket everywhere, but to answer John's question, you know, would negate need for W pocket, uh, WEF and WBTC are, are still uh, very important to the greater ecosystem, and I would expect that W Pocket as a, a wrapped representative remains the same, uh, if only for cross network transport, if nothing else. Uh, yeah, the current thing. I mean, yeah, I think I think that's right. The current thinking is that Wrap Pocket will um, be around for Shannon. But yeah, sorry, Shansky, do you want to jump in? Yeah, for all intents and purposes, the native Pocket token and the Wrap uh, Pocket token. Is going to remain completely the same. That's um, that's kind of the one liner. It is only what we're getting at is that the levels of interoperability that are going to be opened up are going to be much greater. But that's a downstream discussion. Beautiful. And ambassador asking a question that I know a couple of us have chewed on because there were some questions around general architecture. Uh, architecture. Um, what happens to validators post Shannon launch? Is there a risk of mass validator unstaking and what are planned measures to mitigate these risks? And as a little bit greater context there, um, in the modular setup um, using Rollkit on, with Celestia, um, validation is offloaded uh, um, to Celestia, I believe. Um, so there isn't a need for native validation. Is that still correct in the architecture? Yeah, so as of right now, um, we were exploring using Rollkit and then mentioned that we're going to be using Rollkit. Uh, but in order to iterate faster and ship faster, uh, while not uh, kind of losing any of the benefits of the interoperability, both from an ecosystem and developer perspective, uh, what we're doing is using the Cosmos SDK directly without Rollkit. So, uh, when I said that it's going to be the same token, it's going to, um, the rep representation will be the same. All of that will stay the same. We're still going to have our own validator set. But an example of what we're going to get is we could leverage something like rule chains, whereby we mm -hmm. use existing validator set, uh, but also post uh, the, the latest block to other DA layers for additional security. So. We're talking to the team 
kind of just exploring and prototyping things. But you could imagine a world where um, pocket security is still maintained by pockets validators, but we have the optionality of also posting the block to EigenDA and or Avail and or Celestia and basically having a secondary tertiary, et cetera, level of security if we need to. That's a bit of a long-winded answer, but still going to have validators, more interoperability, and security, uh, security will just layer on from the rest of this ecosystem. Interesting. Okay. Well, we'll be looking forward to hearing more about that. I know that I've been uh, wondering, you know, do I need to account for a strategy around unstaking my validators, which is a, a pretty healthy stake, all things considered. Um, so it'd be good to know. Yeah, and once, yeah, once we'll, we are closer, go ahead, Shane. Uh, I, I was just gonna, I, I think we were about to say the same thing. I was, uh, yeah, once uh, we're, we're gonna be releasing a lot more information about all of this. Um, I'm heavily involved in, in uh, figuring out an MVP tokenomics, um, and that will obviously impact, uh, you know, how, how folks, um, you know, kind of look at the, uh, how the token, you know, tokenomics situation will look like in Shannon. Uh, but then, uh, you know, part of that is also explaining, um, you know, what we're gonna be doing with, uh, you know, with validators, uh, you know. So a lot more information is gonna be coming, um, coming, relatively soon uh it might not have all answers um because there's still a lot of things still being figured out but um but yeah it'll definitely give people a very comprehensive look on what exactly shannon is what exactly are all the benefits uh and and, and the major changes and what will the economics look like uh within shannon and uh, that will be coming out very shortly. Um, I'm finishing up a tokenomics uh, uh, modeling stuff now. I'll be uh, sharing it internally uh, for an internal review because I actually I, I created a, a, a uh, really detailed uh, along with the protocol team overview of uh, Shannon, and so shared that internally. Got some feedback. Um, now I'm kind of putting the uh, this. Uh, tokenomics um, uh, work into it as well. And then I'm going to share it again internally uh, to get more feedback uh, just to make sure we're properly representing everything. And then we're going to be releasing it publicly. So yeah, a lot of information is literally in the in the works right now. Um, a lot of it I'm, I'm working on directly. And then uh, that should give a lot of people like yourself, Jinx, um, who are trying to kind of get a visual of what are you know what the how will my tokens work or uh you know where do i want to be in the ecosystem uh, with shannon it'll start to answer a lot of those kind of questions here yeah let me just jump in uh shane and i were literally about to say the same thing so you know great minds think alike uh <laughs> that's, a, that's the first joke i wanted to make uh the second one and this you know, the likelihood of this happening is pretty low, but I, I thought the community might have some fun with it. That when we uh, when we get into the official migration, especially the final stages of the migration, there could very well be a scenario where we have a, 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 a pocket classic and then pocket new. If, for example, we have a large portion of the community uh, not disagreeing with the changes in the migration, the strategy of where the protocol is going. Um, I, I realize can, this can add a little bit of a FUD and discussion, it'll, like it'll be okay, but it could be a fun scenario uh, uh, that could exist uh, hypothetically. So throwing out that thought experiment for people to munch on. You know, for all those people who wanna maintain an old version of Tendermint, uh, you know, for for that chain, uh, for all the people in the community that want to go down uh, the the path that Pocket's been on with the ancient version of uh, uh, or at least what in the tech world is an ancient version of uh, Tendermint, and they don't want all the benefits of the Cosmos SDK, then uh, yeah, it'll it'll be interesting to see the uh, uh, how the migration will will go uh, 
I actually, I, I don't really know anyone that's really stoked about staying on an old version of Tendermint uh, for Pocket's future. So, um, but if they're out there, it'll be interesting to see them come to, come to the surface. Any follow on questions or final thoughts on that? Um, I'm really looking forward to this uh, document slash presentation that Shane's talking about. Do we have an ETA on uh, when we can expect it? Uh, like I said, I'm uh, this week I'm going to be giving the team kind of like another internal version to uh, just review, just to make sure that everything is properly represented. Because the one thing we don't want to do is is release something that isn't properly represented of all the different uh, things that everyone's working on, including the protocol team, uh, uh, including uh, what's happening in the gateway verse, everything like that. So um, because if we release something that hasn't been, uh, you know, that that isn't aligned with every part of the ecosystem, then uh, that's where, you know, it, it turns into a big mess and it creates a lot of confusion. So, uh, so internal review is happening this, basically this week. Uh, and then, you know, or it'll, it'll start this week. So uh, I, I, I can't say exactly how long that'll take. Um, in terms of the MVP of the tokenomics, uh, that's what I'm directly, that's what's determining essentially when this can kind of, uh, really kind of go into uh, an early review uh, or get a review to then release publicly. So um, now if, you know, for anyone who's interested in the actual concepts, uh, I have actually every single um, builder call, uh, the last three builder calls, I've been giving pretty detailed uh, presentations on the research that's been going on uh, with figuring out how to, especially in the area of tokenomics or like what the, supplier ecosystem might look like in Shannon. Um, uh, I've been giving presentations already on a lot of that, uh, a lot of that information. Um, so if people have been following the builder calls uh, that have been kind of going these deep dives, uh, there's going to be a lot of, you know, I actually I'm, I'm using a lot of the same materials and same research that I use for the um, uh, the builder calls are going to be in this overview as well. So the overview will, uh, you know, obviously kind of be a, a summary of uh, all these different things. And if you really kind of want more of a detailed breakout of those things specifically, well, we have presentations on on each one. So um, there, at least for a, a number of them. So including tokenomics, uh, suppliers, things of that nature. So Ben Van, if, if yeah, uh, the overview itself expecting you know hopefully however long internal review kind of takes to get all the uh get all the eyeballs on it that need to get on it just to make sure that uh there's aren't um there's not any major issues with it uh you know i i can't say exactly how long that'll take i mean i'm expecting maybe sometime next week the internal review should be complete and then we'll plan to uh release it to everyone and then that's where uh er you know, but we're not releasing it in a, you know, this is what it is. It, we're releasing it in a, in a uh, this is all the work that's been done. And now we're open to feedback and people can talk, people can discuss, um, but at least we're kind of going, we're presenting it in a holistic fashion so that then when we start getting feedback, there's plenty of angles to always consider with any one topic, right? Because um, we don't want to get into a place where uh, people are discussing how like suppliers should work when it's not taking into account what the gateway ecosystem uh, will be like or require, right? Uh, so it's important that we kind of bring everything together and kind of get everything uh, laid out in a cohesive manner so that when we start talking about one, one area, we have enough information on how the other area will operate that we can uh, uh, you know, come up with ultimately the, the right plan that addresses everything. But for more specific details on Everything from like gateways to tokenomics suppliers, uh, builder calls have been where I've been doing specific deep dives and presentations on on things. And they've all been recorded on YouTube. And then even uh, uh, Pocket News has been doing a great job of uh, creating uh, extra little summaries as well, uh, like tweet threads on them.
Any additional questions on that? Shane, are all of these uploaded to YouTube or somewhere else so that people can follow along? Yeah, they're they're all on YouTube. Um, and and maybe what we or, and what I'll also be doing is inside of the Shannon overview, I'll be linking to these presentations as well. So if people want more context on uh, a given area, they could actually see the uh, um, see the presentation, which also has you know people discussing it, asking questions, and things of that nature. Um, but yeah, it's all on YouTube, uh, and then they've also been posted. Um, actually, I think Pocket News has a thread. Uh, specifically in the forums uh, that link to everything. Because after we have a builder's call, um, they create a uh, they create a thread uh, and then post it to the forum. So let me, um, let me see if I can. Jane, I dropped that. I dropped the link to YouTube in the chat here, just so everybody has that. So there's a specific playlist just for the builder's call. The most recent's at the top there. Um, and we're currently in the process of cutting out those deep dives into their own playlist. So we're going to have one of those just for deep dives that um, I'll share out on the announcements channel, probably towards the end of this week, maybe early next week when it's done. Thanks a lot. That's what I was looking for. Beautiful. Well, that does bring us to the top of the hour. Uh, productive call today i appreciate everyone's uh, time as usual we will see y'all again same time next week same channel and uh again join that office hours uh, open call later this afternoon we'll talk to y'all soon thanks everybody